Zakaria Ibrahim, an embodiment of the people's quest for social justice, sovereignty, and self-determination. This difficult time that I prefer to call it the Ethiopian Jim Crow, the state structure of the Ethiopian Federation has taken an and an abrupt detour from conventional politics, witnessing the beginning of an era of repression, brutality, and crack crackdown on cherished value systems, including the legal system. Targeted attacks, mob killings, lynching, and segregation became common everyday encounters throughout the multinational country. The most shocking expression of the new era, however, is not the crackdown on the established systems of government or the attack inflicted on the entire legal system. But the new order in which, for reasons largely not connected with alleged crimes, the legal system has emerged as a tool of social control incomparable to none in the downs of human history. At the center of this utter dislocation of the legal system from its prime purpose of safeguarding the safety and security of the people is deep-rooted anti-Tigray political conundrum. Starting from the first day, the current administration assumed power through a process most agree as a silent coup in 2018. They dismantled the legal system and institutions that stitched the federation together. The first victim in this process was the constitution, the interpretation and amendment of which was entrusted to the constitutionally designated institution namely called as the House of Federation. As an expression of the attack on the legal system, several innocent Tigran rank and file, regardless of their status, affiliation, and political opinion were grossly arrested, tortured, and killed indiscriminately for crimes completely unrelated to what they were accused. Charged with hate politics, the regime continued to target and compromise the powers of the bicameral lawmaking institution, the House of People's Representative and the House of Federation. Cracking into these institutions, the new regime declared an unofficial war on the sovereign rights of Tigray, and this happened at a time when Tigray was busy in reinventing its development endeavors and reclaiming its constitutional right for self determination. The ensuing media frenzy, unsolicited injection of petrol dollars from Emirates in Saudi Arabia, the promulgation of draconian border and identity laws, and discretionary targeting of Tigrayan professionals, politicians, and leaders such as General Kunfa Daniel and Keria Ibrahim expose the real intention of the leaders of the so-called change as a war on the Tigrayan people and their values. At the power usurping Prime Minister, Real dictatorial in all intent, tone, action, and shape, incorporating Tigrayan people by exclusion, the rest of the people in the multinational federation remained in fantasy of unsubstantiated promises of hope. Despite the national deception, which witnessed conspicuous destruction of the principles of togetherness. Tigray maintained its territorial integrity and stability, sitting in the midst of crossfires. Tigray scholars and young nationalist politicians like Keria Ibrahim knew that the self proclaimed change era operated as a concerted network alternating 
ostensive laws, policies, traditions, and institutional powers that collectively configure to destabilize and eliminate Tigray from the map of the Horn of Africa, if possible, by erasing its identity. It is there the unmatched heroic determination of the formidable Tigran woman, Keria, becomes words of applause. I know Keria personally starting from 2010 as my graduate student at the Department of Anthropology, Magala University. As her former MA thesis advisor, I was able to notice not just her seasoned academic brilliance, but also her critical thoughts which served as input to the course environmental laws and legal frameworks offered to graduate students working towards their degree in environmental anthropology. Her insights, reflections, and questions were crucial in setting a new momentum in the seminar we had in class and her presence in the small group of graduate students was an asset for all of us to pursue critical thinking on every subject we discussed. Her dissertation on people's per perception and practice in the management and utilization of area enclosure through cut and carry feeding system was one of the best papers I've ever read, supervised and read. If the policymakers get access into her seminar work, her thesis could provide them insightful policy recommendations to develop practical environmental policies and strategies. I also knew Keria as a well-seasoned politician and a scholar whose views challenge and speak the structures of power setting standard that often takes the people's interest as a priority. What we've observed in her two years tenure as a speaker of the House of Federation in Arms Administration, working in often in difficult and stressful environments shows us the unbearable challenge she faced throughout her uh, her term about unbending and using principal leadership qualities. Keria has shown us her formidable capability as a Tigrayan woman shouldering the double burden of balancing her duties as a prescribed as prescribed in the job descriptions and defending Tigrayan national interest in a completely in inconceivable institutional context misconstrued by the misconceptions of power surrounding her office. Her recent decision to resign from her position as the Speaker of the House of Federation witness, her cautious handling of situations that otherwise would render irredeemable would not just in Tigray but future relations of peoples and nations of the whole of Africa in entirety. As we know, the dictator turned former treasonous spy prime minister is disbanding the constitution that bound the multi-nation country together, endangering the peace and security of the entire Horn of Africa region. Examining recent debates on prosperity party manufactured constitutional crisis and the illegal procedures pursued by responsible and sold out officials and scholars, she has done a decisive move to rescue people's sovereignty from a doomsday type disaster. Defying profound forms of ethnic profiling that immunizes lawlessness in what happens in what appears to be criminal action, Korea epitomized the grand quest for definition development and self-determination. However, her bold move is not just a rescue mission for Tigray alone. The largest chunk of beneficiaries are, and still will, 
be the nations and people who constituted the disintegrated federation. Whether to use this opportunity to envision a better space is up to them. To grand choice, however, become clear and bold once the news of Gera's refusal to become a rubber stamp of illegal power grab is heard from end to end. Gera's decisive disapproval of the current constitutional interpretation process being as a blow to the systemic injustices captivated in the past two years, evidence the unwavering significance of the struggle of Tigran women in the front lines of national struggles for social justice. In the 17 year Tigran revolution to overthrow the Derg region, Tigran women played a crucial role in different capacities and positions, commanding army and serving the people in administration. John Young, in his 1997 monograph, argued that women's participation in the struggle has earned TPLF a broad based support among the rural population and more particularly among the grassroots women whose support was very decisive for the victory achieved in 1991. Jenny Hammond, John Young and Arda Berher have argued that women fighters constituted more than 30% of the total total to PLA fighters, which at the guy argued the number fi the, the, the numerical figure would exceed 88,000 by the end of the struggle in 1991. Although women fighters who took up arms against the Turk were not only in the history of women's struggle in Tigran, women have fought as competent camp followers, advisors, and leaders. However, women's contribution in the Tigran struggle surpassed imagination. According to Angela Ville, women's women fighters in the Tigran struggle were stronger than their male com comrades and they have done a decisive contribution to the triumph of the struggle, assuming leadership positions as commanders and combatants tolerating hunger and longings and sufferings. In the struggle, women were fighting another fight within their party, raising women's issues demanding for social, economic, and political equality. Gabru Tavarika called this as a revolution within revolution. Scarious Keria Ibrahim's announcement of her resignation shows us an, an embodiment of women's quest to lead change and continuity of political, economic, and social change. For those women of this kind, the grand people, the rank and file professionals, and all society in general has to think of a sort of a word, uh, a word. And finally, I have a recognition. In recognition of the extraordinary commitments and accomplishments of national significance, I recommend all fellow Tigrans to consider establishing a house of fame and a word for those citizens whose contribution is worthy of significance. Honoring heroes and heroines strengthens national unity and creates an example for the rest of us in the society to follow. Awards and recognitions inspire and motivate, motivate millions to take a responsibility and even become champions of national How many of you?